A few minutes later, finds the two of us sitting in a mutual silence inside my car. With the two of us in a mood, thanks to one specific scumbag, it's better to keep our own opinions to ourselves, lest we lash out at each other. Let it melt away on its own. How long until then? Can't tell. Zach's still in lockup, and I wasn't able to do a damn thing past getting angry and almost, almost socking the living daylights out of scumbag. Really, I just want to hit something, damn it. I almost envy Isabella for having the guts to throw water at him. But as amazing as it is to watch, she still shouldn't have done that. This is the rights we're talking about. No matter how much he hits on any woman he sees on the streets, the moment you piss him off, you better watch your back. It might have just been water, but she'll be living in the same city as him. Who knows when they'll meet again. He's just bunked up over at Anselm. I shudder to think how he can easily make her life hell with just a flick of his finger. It doesn't help the thought of that alone adds a whole new level of irritation atop the disappointment, anger, and outrage. And in my frustration, I slam a hard fist down on the steering wheel. Oddly, is what finally piques a reaction from her. You know what? You would have ended up in an even bigger problem if you did hit him. Mm-hmm. You threw water at him. It won't leave a mark, though. He'll live. The only thing I ruined is his expensive suit. Still the same thing. And you acting like this isn't helping Zack at all! Really, blame is the last thing I want to hear right now, especially with the stunt she pulled. She means well, but... But anger clouds a lot of things. The top one. I know, damn it. What do you even know? Yeah, don't be dismissive. Just be angry. Yeah, like we, they're both <laughs> aware that nothing helped the situation. They're both just frustrated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just can't help but sprinkle my own answers with the same heat. I know, damn it. I know, damn it. <laughs> Somehow admitting that out loud feels like a release in itself. As if a dam has been opened, every pent-up frustration spills from my mouth before stopping myself occurs to me. Seriously, it's one bad thing after another. First I get kicked off my own case, now Zach's in jail, and still no word from Rebecca. To top it all off, there's a ghost, a damn ghost of all bloody things, going after us. Everything's such a clusterfu- Ow! Without any warning, she gives my forehead a hard flick. A sense of deja vu hits me. Like how I did this earlier in the week to her. <laughs> the pain is fleeting, but enough to stop my tirade. She appears completely unamused when I glance at her. There's no trace of anger in her eyes, though she even lacks the sharpness Rebecca has when scolding someone. Hers are softer, but doesn't fail to nail the disappointment mother look. All at once, regret replaces the annoyance. You don't have to act so pissy all the time, you know? Well, she's right about that, at least. Not everything's gonna go your way. That's something you'll have to live with. Her dad just died, prick. That's just how it is. Easy to say, but the moment everything goes south... Well, that's why we're here, right? It doesn't always have to be just you. You'll miss a lot of things in life, the good things, if you keep thinking like that. If my mama were here, you'd get a scolding. She throws a quick smile my way, then turns her attention back to the window. Her gesture leaves no room for an argument. There's some introspection, plenty. And the whole thing did serve to clear my head. And just like that, somehow, everything doesn't look too bleak anymore. Isabella always had that effect on people. Can we look at the relationship? Wow! <gasps> it's almost full! Hmm. <laughs> when, are we gonna end this game with another awkward sex scene? <laughs> that was only awkward because they didn't even know each other and it all of a sudden... Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Gratitude and apology almost form in my lips. Oh. I'm really worried because 
like Better. they're showing the main street of this city, and I feel like she's gonna like fall on their car or something. Oh. Very like cinema movie kind of thing. You drive that red Prius. Well, why the Prius? There's plenty of Porsches. Or whatever. No, I had that backwards. What are you there's, a, about? there's a really well made short film. Um, I forget what the group is called, but the film's called 005 Jumpers. It's the fifth in a series of like little films people had made. It was shot um, on the 4th of July a few years ago, just in town here. Really good. It was about the kid that wants to commit suicide and his like uncle or something stops him. And he's gonna jump. It's like, you drive a red Porsche. He's like, no, don't jump on my Porsche. There's plenty of Priuses. Jump on a Prius. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Good film. Uh, though before the words even fail, my phone rings, effectively cutting through the conversation. A quick glance at the caller ID shows Rebecca's name blinking on the screen beside me. Isabella stares, waiting. It's Becca. I'll tell her to meet us at Salem well as soon as she can. Excuse me. As soon as she can. ASAP. <laughs> Without another word, I slip out of the car and walk back into the precinct. I don't know why they always have to leave. Holding off on answering the call until the door closes, the noise of the city fades away behind me. However, the tone Rebecca assumes isn't what I'm hoping to hear. Becca? Uh, hey, did I wake you up? Ragged a bit out of breath, there's a tinge of urgency in it. Listening to her from my side of the line makes it seem like she's just run a marathon part of this call. I mean... No, I, I left you a voicemail, so I thought... All those flights of stairs. Mm-hmm. Where are you? Ash, do you remember that one time? The question catches me off, to say the least. Where is she going with this? The... what? Back in secondary. We joined a contest back then, didn't we? We had to dress you up as a girl and... No. What? You looked really pretty. I think I still have that picture somewhere. Burn it. We're not talking about that again. You promised. It did happen. Not to mention I'm very fond of, to be honest. <laughs> not a memory I'm very fond of. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Did I just, like, not... Did you, I, you put a different word in there. What did I say? You said not to mention I'm very fond of. Oh, n that moment is one... Oh, where is it? That did happen. Not a memory. Okay, yeah, I, I can't read. Still, laughter escapes me, no matter how embarrassing it is. That moment is one of the few I can remember clearly in my head. I never did find where she kept those photographs. Seriously, what brought this on? Nothing. Just... It's just the first thing I remembered. You're being weird today, Becca. <laughs> Whatever. Listen, I need you to go home right away. I'm at Salem Well right now and... Thanks, Ash. <laughs> what? Suddenly her voice hitches, almost as if she's in tears, and it sends every alarm bell ringing in my head. For better or worse, something more than wrong is happening on her end of the line. Regardless, I give her the focus she asks of me. I don't want to think that she is nearly pleading for me to listen. I like to imagine that it isn't horror and a deep underlying resignation that I hear in her voice. I'm transfixed. Hold on, did I do something? For everything. Rebecca, what? I'm so glad to have known you. Wait, what are you... Whatever her words mean or feelings they carry ceases to matter in this instant. They're all inconsequential when someone, Rebecca's life, might be in danger. This whole thing, it's just wrong. Wherever she is, something's fucked up going on and I'm listening to it right now, helpless. God damn it, Rebecca, where are you? <laughs> A laughter, and then the line drops dead. Rebecca! Rebecca! 
dread turns into terror, and the sudden pandemonium in the precinct comes rushing in at all at once. Officers barking orders, the rapid tapping of foot against the floor, and people shouting for a dispatch. There's a split second where I'm torn between trying to figure out where Rebecca is and finding out what happened to he happened to inspire such chaos all of a sudden. It's the same. See, Luxburn is peaceful as cities go. If there's a crime, it's usually low key, in and out of public eye as quickly as they come. Things are kept private and on a need to know basis unless the media catches wind of a high profile case or if something really odd happens. Of course, there's gossip and people talk, but everybody minds their own business most of the time. So when commotion happens and people are shouting for dispatch, you know there's trouble. It took only two words. Two words broadcasting over every police radio all over the city, including the one on the front desk to fire everything up. Jumper up. Jumper up. The emergency service unit is assembling, each one hoping that they'll be able to talk this one down. An ambulance will already be placed on standby if the library isn't too far from the hospital. Regardless, it spurs something in my gut. Copy that. Can we get a 1020? Cold, hard feeling that tells me I should be there. Jumper was spotted on the rooftop of the city library. Need dispatch immediately. But my feet won't move. The phone in my hand creaks under the pressure of my grip and knuckles turn white. All of a sudden, my body's paralyzed with thoughts of what I might find there as people around me rush toward the scene. It's only when something tugs at my arm that the haze bearing down on me lifts. Beside me, Isabella stands worried, eyes questioning, a concerned frown in her lips. I didn't even notice when she followed me. But whatever she has seen in my face, I must... If I'm... Ugh, I left her, must forced her to... I don't know what I just said. Whatever she <laughs> has seen in my face must have forced her to. Ash, what's going on? The radio in your car is blasting some report about a jumper? Rebecca. Where is she? Did she say something? Is she coming to meet us? No, she's... Her hold on my arm tightens. Fear and panic flashes in her eyes while she looks at me with the same terror and dread swirling at the pit of my stomach. Did something happen to Becca, Ash? My own tongue has gone thick and... With a sickening, foreboding feeling, my whole brain has shut off. All I know is I have to run. I need to get there. Ash! What happened? I... I don't know. Just... Just stay here. I'll... The rest of those reassurances die on my tongue and I broke into a run, leaving Isabella with only a comforting squeeze on her shoulder. She's probably chasing after you. The library isn't too far from the precinct. In cases like these, however, every minute counts, each second critical. A cold and cruel voice already whispers in my head. I want to believe it isn't. I hope and I wish it isn't who I think it is. Because I don't want to be someone who has been so useless in that exact moment, frozen by apprehension when I hear her speak. I knew something was off. God damn it, I don't want to think I might have that might have been her final words I'm listening to. But the horrifying possibility that what I fear is real drowns out everything else. You're too late. Anything and everything in front of me are mere obstacles in my way. I run, jump, push everything aside as I try to make a beeline for my destination. I don't even have time to let go of mindless apologies or to explain that there is an emergency in the bystanders I've shoved aside. But even with all that... Oh. I'm too late. We got an achievement. I guess that's good. Jumper is down. I repeat, jumper is down. We've got a 1046 to the library. Over. Copy that. Can we have identification of the body? We've got a bystander here who says he knows the woman. Rebecca Gales from the local high school. Rebecca. But obviously it's really suspicious because it says help me everywhere. Mm -hmm. She obviously didn't do that herself. I'll recognize her anywhere, even from a mile away. And for once, that isn't a welcome fact. Too clear, too vivid. Her broken body lies on the sidewalk in one big bloody mess. Her hair fans out and strands out in stark contrast to the pavement, slick with blood and redder than it's ever been. The right side of her head has caved from the impact and her right arm is twisted and mangled. 
And there are those words around her. Help me, just like the letter. 10-4. Medical personnel are on their way. Resume securing the immediate area for investigation and cleanup. Gone. All available officers have been dispatched for crowd control. Over. She's gone. Buko, over and out. And I wasn't able to do a damn thing about it. Shortly, officers moved to pull the bystanders away from the scene. People who have witnessed the fall passes by who just want to see what's interesting going on. Someone's screaming, weeping, crying. But I can't do anything other than stare. I can't even bring myself to come closer, only stand among the crowd as just another civilian. The world has become, has come to a standstill until someone's horrified scream tears above everything and nothing else matters. <coughs> a familiar voice. A blur of red rushes by. My body moves, my hand shoots up to reach for Isabella's before any coherent thought forces me to her or she can't even approach the body because damn it, damn it, damn it. Damn it! She's the last person who needs to see this. She doesn't need another death in her life. Not after Rose, not after her father's death, not after this. The tug causes her to stumble back gently. I pull her towards me. It takes a whole two breaths for her to steady herself. Shaking, she braces both her hands against my arms, gripping my jacket tightly as if it's the only thing keeping her from breaking. She tries briefly to pull away, but my hold remains firm. Don't look, you don't need to see this. Though even then, there's weakness to her movements, her breathing labored. Any minute, it seems like her knees will suddenly buckle if I don't keep a steady hand on her. Yet it all shatters when she glances up at me. Tears streaming down her cheeks, panicked, desperate, her voice brimming with anguish when she speaks. Ash, we can still save her! We need to! We need to! Elle. Elle, she's gone. Shh. No, Ash! Rebecca, she's here! She's still... We have to help her! There must be something! We can't... We can't just let her die like this! Weak as she is, she makes another attempt to break free. But my arm stays unyielding against her, and instead I draw her closer, her face sink sinking into my shoulder as furious tears flow from her eyes. At the sound of her sobs alone, everything around us fades. Every sound, every movement becomes nothing but noise. No more. Even now, I can't do anything other than stare at the pool of blood on the pavement and hold on to Isabella like a lifeline, as she does with me. I can't even bring myself to move. Because no matter what I say or what I do right now, empty words won't bring back the friend we lost. Numb is an understatement. No. I feel dead inside. We both do. Zach's in prison, and Rebecca's... The weight of my own failures has never felt as palpable as it does right now. In the end, I can only hang on to all that remains. 